Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another special episode of Talk to the Internet, featuring Bruce Green, Sir Lawrence, Kriken, that's me, and our special guest today, Charbog. No, no, Charborg, Charborg. What was my Char- line? Did I earworm uh, you that hard? <laughs> His, your line is, hi, everyone, I'm Charbog. Charbog. Hi, everybody, I'm Charbog. Woo! His name is Charborg, dude. Uh, it's it's debatable. No one's actually, no one's actually <laughs> confirmed yeah, that. There's really no way to know uh, what his <laughs> name is or isn't. We'll have to check the records. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. So today we've been doing this thing about once a month where we talk with a different creator on uh, this lovely internet, and we talk about uh, what they make. In this case, uh, Charbog makes uh, some <laughs> oh really. My gosh awesome uh, internet content on YouTube and Twitch uh, and has an awful skin tag by the looks of it. Uh, we're, we're playing- skin tag? I, <laughs> yeah, look, I, I don't it. want to tell you, dude, I but we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're playing, uh, oh God, what even is this name? Like, he sent me this game Fishing about- Fishing Planet. Fishing Planet. We're playing Fishing, Fishing Planet. Planet. <laughs> Fishing Planet. Fishing we're playing Planet. Fishing Planet with Charbog and we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be catching fish um, and we're just gonna be chatting and talking a bit about his history as a creator, uh, and why he picked a fish as his avatar, because this is uh, this is his doing. You know, it was never even an issue. No, it was never even weird. It wasn't even questioned until uh, just recently. I've seen like an increased amount of people asking me why a fish. And, uh, well, I thought I'd assumed it was because your your catchphrase of uh, oh, don't even start this. Don't wait, wait, does he have a, he has a catchphrase? He does. He does. He's actually oh, one of the few creators that still has a catchphrase. You know, like you start, you open and end your uh, your your stream and your videos. Yeah. He goes. What's a catchphrase? What is it? He goes. I hope you're having a fishtastic day. <laughs> That's pretty catchy. <laughs> That's that is really catchy. Can I get That's that on really the shirt or anything? <laughs> Dude, Craig, he, like a month and a half ago. Kraken came into my chat and said that. <laughs> and he said, oh, uh, your catchphrase, why don't you say it? And then ever since then, like, every day, like, I stream and people every day are trying to get me to say this catchphrase that just doesn't exist. Oh, man. Oh, somebody in my chat <laughs> said, I, in, in quotes, catchy, because we're fishing. Ugh. Ooh. Ugh. Hey, hurts. hey, Kraken, that's a pretty good line. Oh, Whoa. no. Now you, Charborg, now you. Uh, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, that was I'm it. sorry. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being fair to him. So Charborg is uh, a close friend of mine. What does he do? Yeah, what does he do? What does Craig? he do? What yeah. do yeah. I do? Yeah. What do you, yeah, he, he makes some very interesting YouTube videos. Uh, he, as, as I was describing before we went live, I don't know why I was nicer to you before we went live than when we were You were so live. nice before. <laughs> <laughs> you're you very complimentary. Like you went feeling like, you felt like a, like a father figure and then instantly to like, I don't know, like evil uncle or something. Yeah, drunk uncle just, just <laughs> mispronouncing your name and- Say the line, kid! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, sorry, real quick before I finish introducing you, I think I've, cast my line a hundred feet into the ocean or this river and I don't know how to get it out again. What 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 is the the button um, or like how do I reel click? it back? Left click. Alright, it's gotta keep Did you not it. practice the game before we I went did, live? I thought I did, but <laughs> I don't know where my the bobber went. I it's think just you a might be snagged you're line. snagged on the oh, ocean no. floor. No, you're going you further. You're, you're going further out. It is reel going in. further. Yeah, re the, reel I, in, reel that in. That was reeling in. I, that's what I thought reeling in was. No 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 no. The numbers should be Look, going down. But it's going up. I don't know why it's going up. I literally am holding it up and le- okay, I might be broken. Um, anyway, look, this doesn't matter. What matters is uh, sharp. <laughs> it's going to go over the dock. It, it's oh, yeah, just no. going longer. I think something has gone horribly wrong. Um, uh, go the sharp- other way. Real the I, other way. <laughs> what other way, dude? Left click is real. What in. if you cut a fish? Right, on try the right click. Try right click. How is that right even click happening? Is Reels up. don't eject a fishing line. As I'm reeling, it's. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Okay, it was broken. It was definitely broken. It's happening again. No, it's going up. Oh, there's a fish. That's why. I got my first fish. If you hold right click, oh. you can walk around with the fish. Uh, Charberg, I don't think I had a clearance to fish here. I just got fined a hundred bucks. Oh yeah, Ooh. you have to buy a license. <laughs> We're poachers? Well, I, if you don't have a license, I, I guess. I think you're going to prison, buddy. All right, Charborg, what do you do? 
<laughs> I just make YouTube videos, okay? Okay, That's yeah, what, like what kind of YouTube videos do you, like would you say you make? Um, How would you describe it? I like to make stuff that feels less like just a compilation of random like funny stuff and more like a story from start to finish. So I'll I'll record forever and just see what naturally happens and then I'll record with intent to like wrap it up into a story. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I, I can't really think of a good example, but say, say I, I have a, a thing that emerges that's an arc where I don't know it's someone getting bullied. Then I would want a like an intro and an outro, like build up and rise and fall to make it make sense. Yeah. Trevor so, is also I don't think very good at 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 you know he's he's too modest. He's not oh, he's okay. not he's not talking about a lot of the stuff that I think really makes him unique as a creator. And one of those things is these stories that he's describing, a lot of them he does on stream first. So he'll do a stream where they play a game and while they're streaming, they notice kind of this emergent story has evolved. And then he'll go in afterwards and then, you know, from recording extra kind of B-roll and voiceover, kind of reshape it into a, di a different narrative that, you know, works a lot better as a YouTube video. So yeah. it's, it's a, I think, a, a really interesting way of, mixing the mediums of like a live stream kind of engagement with you know a, a much cleaner post uh story um and then he's also done some really creative projects uh that are totally different like your uh your gta uh kind of whole movie i would say like the, the oh, kentucky yeah. movie i um i have a bad habit of like accidentally, <laughs> accidentally starting things that are too like hard and annoying to realistically do and then uh getting too wrapped up to stop so i i, I took like i took audio from like uh i don't know three months worth of live streams and then shaped it into a story and then completely redid the visuals in gta single player to make it like cinematic and uh it took like five or six months to do it was such a it was such a pain it sounds it sounds awesome. I mean, like, do you? I guess for me, these sorts of things are. Do you? Did you get the return on investment that you wanted? Like, do, once you once you finished, were you like, great? I'm glad I did that. Or were you like, man, that took way too long? Uh, a little bit of both, I think. I, I mean, I'm yeah. I'm happy with spending time on stuff and doing all that. But I think the longer I go between uploading something, the more pressure I feel because I feel like people are going to be like, oh, it's been like three months. This better be amazing. And then in turn, I'm right. like stressing out, like, is this, is this a good, I, I have no clue. I get in my <laughs> yeah. head about it. Yeah. So that no, sucks. that's, but I, I, that I like making high effort stuff, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's rewarding. His, uh, his GTA one is, is really fascinating. Cause you know, the GTA RP is like this, enormous scene on Twitch and has really had a lot of staying power more than most stuff on Twitch. And I think part of that's just because it's all a bunch of individual streamers, characters that all have their own story arcs. And so if you're a fan of one of them, you'll want to watch the others kind of to see how they, they all interconnect and everything. Um, and the way Charbrook did it was have this kind of consistent narrative of his main character, Ken Tucky, uh, that like overlapped with a bunch of other people's characters. Um, and then uh, it's it's really surreal to watch the, uh, the the full video of it because he takes all... I'm sorry, I just hit level three and I just want to acknowledge that real quick. I think I lost cheese. <laughs> hey, you got um, cheese, dog. <laughs> I got cheese and I can go to the check. I don't know. That's a far way to travel. Oh, you can start a pack? Hey, we'll like make that. a weekend out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see this? Yeah. That's a good one. I'm keeping this one, and I'm not going to be fined like you were because I have a license. I don't do shit illegally. Ooh. Well, the weird Damn. thing was I haven't been fined for the last two that I caught, but the first one I was fined <laughs> for, and I don't know how that one I think was it's different. like a gamble, like whether or not they catch you or not. Ooh, okay. All right, Kraken, it's a little bit of fun. Kraken's a um, rebel. They're going to send him like a ticket in the mail, and he's just going to mail back a don't tread on me postcard. <laughs> I've done that several times. I mean, I I think for my last three tax returns, it was that was what was included in the uh, in the pack. Yeah, what are they going to do? A, arrest you or something? <laughs> yeah. Get real. I mean, as long as you keep moving, they don't actually catch you. It's it's what I found. Yeah, you have to no, stop. That's what people don't know. As long as you're moving, they can't touch you. Yeah, it's the people that yeah, just both, stop. That's like no, guys. Pack. That's wrong. That's wrong. You'll go to jail. 
<laughs> no, you're, you're right. going to jail, guys. Uh, don't right. listen it, old man Bruce with okay, his right. laws. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just, his... just, I'm just saying, just putting it out there. Well, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. They still let oh, you stream in prison, right? Oh yeah. I God, I hope so. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm done for. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So Trapper is like. Uh, I really I I want us to like look at the uh, the GTA video at some point um, because it's I've really seen nothing like it uh, since it's basically the whole concept was he took only the audio from all of his different streams because the audio is clean right the audio tells the story but of course in anything like GTRP there's a bunch of like finickiness when it comes to the animations and like UI and a bunch of other stuff so rather than mess with all that in editing to make it cohesive. Uh, he went back into GTA in single player and like made a cinematic out of every single scene and like you know actually had the characters run and do a certain thing. So I would love to hear more about the process of that because oh, yeah. I know you said it took you months, but yeah. I I don't I, think I've it, seen anyone a, 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 like even attempt something like that. It all started from one like okay I I'm very self conscious about putting stream content on my YouTube because or I was at least because I thought people wouldn't think it's as high effort. Uh, and so I was like, <laughs> initially I was like, man, are people going to like this because it's like stream footage? And then I was like, I'm just going to redo this cinematically just because I think this would be cool. Like, like one little part, like there's one little section in particular where we drive a car off of a cliff and I'm like, it'd be cool if the camera like followed it down. And then, um, then I was like, well, it kind of looks weird going into a cinematic thing out of nowhere. So I'm gonna make the little scene before that cinematic and the little scene after that. And oh, I'm like, no. well, now that looks a little weird with with <laughs> just that being cinematic. So I'm gonna do it for the, the one before and after that. And I should do the intro as well, maybe the outro too. And then eventually it was just I'm oh, four God, months into this, and thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm like <laughs> redoing this entire video. But I mean, I'm glad I did it. Like it, it's it was very interesting to do. I just uh, it all sort of stemmed from being self-conscious of putting stream content on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I um, think, I mean, I, the self-consciousness of a, of a creator, I, I, I think it would be cool to, to talk about that for a moment because a lot of people that I know online that do work like us, you know, in like the, the public, the public realm, uh, <laughs> like we have our own idea of like what our brand or like our, like, you know, the the requirements, I guess, or the quality that we need to hold up to are, and it can kind of paralyze you to do new things. But at the same yeah. time, you know, you kind of have to play within your field if you want to retain the audience that watches you for a specific thing, you know? Um, I'm wondering if Bruce, you or Lawrence, uh, have any thoughts on that? Because I know you've been, I mean, you guys were a part of a, a video collective for a very long time that had you know, a brand, right? And you had to kind of adhere to that. And how do you reconcile that with like your desire to change up things and evolve? Uh, yeah, Lawrence, you want to, do you want to go ahead and go first? Uh, it's, I mean, it can be, it can be tough. Uh, it, to some degree, if you're part of a brand and, uh, you're part of kind of a machine, uh, it, it, you, you think it's the, uh, the dream is that you get paid to do what you want, right? If you want to make a show and you find, you found a way that to make it earn enough revenue that a company's willing to pay you to make it. That should be great. Um, but yeah, uh, the, when it comes to like corporate sales, sales mean predictability. You can't sell something that you do whenever you want, so it has to fit a schedule. And then once it starts to sell to, to sponsors and things like that, then you're obligated to do it. So as much as like it can be fun, that process of figuring out how to make something creative also be financially successful, it really does kind of nail you down to doing just that um, unless you try to migrate it to somebody else but I don't know I feel like uh, I feel like in, in new media there are I feel like there are only a few brands or a few shows that have migrated through multiple hosts I feel like podcasts are probably the, the biggest one that can actually successfully change uh, creative mm. direction but yeah, yeah maybe, maybe and, and just like gaming news shows and stuff from big brands those things cycle out hosts and, and probably have different producers and writers as the years go by yeah, it does seem like so much of YouTube uh, and I guess anything internet media relies so much on uh, sort of authenticity. And I do think that after you do something for two years, uh, for it to maintain the same like structure and creative tone, it can be difficult to do that with 100% authenticity and vigor. Uh, 
especially if you're a creative person. Actually, thinking about it, like, oh, what's this? Uh, Phil, Phil, Phil DeFranco, I think, <laughs> might be might have the trophy for the longest run on a like mm. consistently Ooh. produced creative show. Um, maybe that's, I don't. Yeah, know. that's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that, but I think you might be right. Um, or close to it. Uh, and I, he's an interesting example because, like, I mean, Charberg, like you and I have never really been a part of like a persistent brand. It's been more just kind of a personal brand. And then there's been like, you know, side projects and groups that have been like collaborations with other people. Mm -hmm. um, do you think any, like, how, does that resonate with you the same way as, as what Lawrence just described of like, you know, having these responsibilities as a brand or is it a different kind of responsibility you see as yeah. an individual creator? I mean, it's, it's weird because it's like, I feel obligation to make stuff um, that my audience expects. And that goes back to what I was saying about how, um, you know, the longer between uploads, the more I worry that it's not going to live up to their standards and all that stuff. And then it's like, like streaming has been a major relief on me because when I was doing, when I was doing uh, just YouTube and then, you know, long waits in between, it was so dependent on every video being amazing and like doing really well mm -hmm. to like try and like you know get this off the ground and like support yeah. myself and all that and the I don't tent know, so, pole model yeah is what it's called you know oh well, man I that think was rough Char charborg hit on something earlier where you know like the, the longer you wait and the more effort you put into something the more pressure there is around it to to like for it to be good and i remember doing when i was at funhouse um, and actually, the same applies now for Twitch streams too. So, like, I just did that flight simulator stream, and I put I had put a ton of work into that, and um, you know, I was trying to make sure everything would go off without a hitch. And I was way more nervous and way more scared about doing that stream than I was about you know like starting up today, <laughs> you know, because because today was like, oh, it'll just be a podcast with us talking about stuff. It should be pretty easy, you know, like our normal sort of free form improv uh play a video game stream and those are we do those every day we're used to them and that flight simulator stream i was like i i don't i hadn't been nervous for things in a while and that was one of the things that i was i was genuinely very nervous about and i've always oh yeah i've always wondered because like most of the time i don't know that have i don't know if we've ever run it like any of us have as, as creators have run into a thing where like we were we had put a lot more time and effort to, into it we knew it was going to be a big event type stream or video or whatever else and then it failed <laughs> like as i generally the audience is pretty forgiving so i don't know has there ever been a time for any of you guys where you made something that you had put a lot of uh effort behind and then when it when you put it out like people just shit on it and you're like oh fuck <laughs> yeah there was something like that for me recently and i oh. i have um it, it sort of ties into what i was going to talk about like with the expectation to do really well and then you know if it doesn't quite hit the mark it also goes into that with uh like having uploads so infrequently um if one doesn't do well like uh like youtube not pushing it out and like recommending it to people as much then right. it's, it's such a heavy blow because it's like two months between uploads and then like i can literally look at the analytics and see oh um my only my audience is watching this and it has no impressions outside of my audience because mm, it right, just didn't get right. recommended around which that that really sucks but yeah like i made a thing in minecraft where i did um a mix of like narration and uh re-recorded shots with stream stuff and it didn't land as well as that grand theft auto one that uh that we were talking about earlier and that yeah. that definitely hurt because like I, I put so much effort into it and then i saw a lot of people kind of not like shitting on it or anything but um the reception wasn't as well to like to how i did it and that yeah it definitely really hurt i guess because you get so focused on working on something for a while and then you're just not looking at it critically i guess or mm -hmm. i don't know i guess yeah. that that's uh you hit on an interesting topic i think which is to me at least the separation of of pride in the execution of an idea and then to some degree, the validation of, of that execution by external metrics, whether that's right. audience yeah. gain, audience viewership, or things like that. So I don't know, the, like, 
this is this is something this is wisdom setting in for me or at least it's it's me giving myself permission to not care about certain factors but and it also maybe i just have the privilege of looking at things this way but s the older i get the more i realize some of the some of the f my favorite things that i've seen people make were made because they were like genuine expressions of intent and not because they were made to make money or made to get an audience yeah so it, i know it can be frustrating um but i've more and more learn to sort of divorce popular appeal from what I consider to be good execution of what I consider to be an interesting idea and kind of like just embracing that maybe not all my ideas are popular and that's okay. So mm -hmm. I've, I've thought a lot about that too, M mostly about just, yeah, trying to divorce my self evaluation of the performance of something from how, you know, YouTube or Twitch tells me that idea is received. Yeah. And it's also helped branching out. Like when, what Kraken was saying, the tent pole thing or whatever, um, just the fact that I now have multiple avenues to like <clears throat> express myself and like financially support myself, it's completely, completely different. Like I feel so much better about spending time on these big projects when I can do a lot of little projects that are streams, like goofy ideas on streams that wouldn't necessarily be this big video. And it, it's really helped me just creatively to to be able to do these things just spur of the moment like oh i'm gonna do this because it would be fun and then do it and just see how it goes but yeah craig, what, about, what about you craig and I, I know i know you're doing a photo mode with the uh <laughs> yeah you're taking a nice I'm trying picture to, i'm trying to get a picture with me and the fish 6.9 <laughs> inch fish it's almost a quarter pound fish. yeah that fish is like a piece of shit dude you should just throw that back <laughs> like you need dude, to catch a bigger fish no man. no but imagine dude imagine like going to someone's like little tavern in like fucking maine or something and this is a picture of them like this yeah. with a teeny <laughs> tiny eyes. fish on the wall <laughs> oh. and it's just like they're really proud of this catch and it's just this really pathetic little creature what if it's I signed just, by the person then yeah he, they signed like, their own they famous picture. Oh, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and then you look over uh, there, just standing behind the counter, same expression. Yeah, it's the same person. You're like, oh, it's it's the owner. It's, it's, not, it's not a famous person. Uh, Trevor, how do I uh, throw the fish around? Um, or once I, uh, I have it. <laughs> um, okay, so for throwing the fish around, you have to snag it out of the water. So instead of reeling it up, you get it close enough, and then you start Ooh. fucking going crazy like this, and, and it yanks it out of the water. It. Yeah. Okay. But for right for right now, I think you can just run around with it and kind of put it in my face and stuff, and that's the extent. I'm gonna run this one of the woods and let it go. <laughs> yeah, dude. Pile. Just change change its habitat. Like what? It used to live in a pond, and now it's gonna live in a bucket of water you found in the woods. No, there's no water. <laughs> it's just dirt. A pile of damp leaves. <laughs> now it's a forest fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got worms. I had like I um, said reward, and it was a pile of worms. <laughs> Hooray! Oh yeah, the, the the English in this is a little off. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. I want to find a good example because it was There's made like, by professional fishermen and they speak differently. Yeah, totally. Like when you send a friend request, it's uh, um, oh where'd it go? That's gone now. It's not language isn't as important on the docks. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's a silent universal language. I don't get language. along with people. I get along yeah. with fish. Yeah, the universal language is fishing, and we all know it. <laughs> it's not oh math. Get out of here. It's just pounding light beer and getting baked by the sun. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, sorry, what are you saying, Bruce? <laughs> oh, nothing. I was going to ask uh, Charborg another question because um, I know, like, the stuff you make, uh, some of it, it sounds like it's movie length. Like, you're, we're talking like 90 minutes. Oh, no. Uh, no I, I've never made anything that long. The longest oh, really? thing I, mean, I ever the, made the GTA was. GTA 1 was close. I don't think it was. I think GTA was like twenty-seven minutes. At I think that's what it was, something like that. But okay, um, it definitely had like a rise and a fall. Yeah, in, it had like the same arc of a movie. It. Yeah, right. It was. Did, it felt like it was a full, you know, plot. Did the is there like has there ever been anything inside you like what what made you start to want to make this stuff? Was it was it because you're like I would really like to make a television show or I'd really like to make a movie or like uh, or was this something yeah. completely unique to you? No, I think it was being young because, like, when I was young, like, 15, 14 or 15, I had a YouTube channel with all my friends that we would just, you know, mess around and make these stupid videos. And I have, like, the first video I ever edited where it was, <laughs> we, like, I went and stood in the road and set the camera. And then I went, ah! And then I ran out of the road and waited for a car to pass. 
and then made it look like I got hit by a car, but <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. it didn't it didn't look like it at all. It looked awful. Oh um, man. But yeah, I think the old backyard videos. I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just watching like growing up, like watching Red versus Blue and other random stuff like that. Like just being like, oh man, I could I could do something like that, and then just messing around with your friends and you know coming up with stuff. And I, I stopped for a long time. Uh, when I got to high school, I kind of <laughs> I kind of uh, slowed down a bit because. Um, Somehow everybody in the school found out that we made these videos and they made fun of us <laughs> for no. like making these stupid videos. Oh, come and, on. Uh, I, I just kind of stopped for a while there. And then later I picked it up when I, I was like in the parking lot of my college and I was like, I want to make YouTube videos. And so I just started working on it. That's awesome. Um, is there anything that you have like... Do you have anything in your head right now or, you know, some sort of idea that you've written down that you haven't been able to make yet? And you're like, oh, oh man, if only I had $20,000, you know, who knows, uh, a crew and like a bunch of friends. Like, is there something like that that you have some, you know, big idea? Uh, there's there's a few things like that that um, like just random ideas for like I have an idea for a game and I have an idea for like a big project with a lot of people that uh, I can't think of a game that would work for. Maybe, I don't know. Like, I would have to probably get somebody to develop something. But um, as far as, like, really big things, I, I'm not really. I mean, I just sort of come up with stuff as as I'm making it. So it's it's mm-hmm. not like I have, besides a couple things, it's not like I have, like, anything crazy that I would love to make. Right. But, yeah, I mean, th- there's, like, a few things, like a game I was talking about and, and uh, this this one big project I want to make, but other than that, not really. There was. I know that's uh, not really that's not really like the answer that would. <laughs> that no, would no, be no. Desire, I was just, but I was I mean, wondering it. it. Yeah. If you're like, it's also good to be like content, you know, finding something yeah. that you really enjoy, yeah. and you know, yeah. Like the other thing, another. Uh, I, I I don't even know if I would describe it as like a hobby or if it's like your like a your side passion. I'm not even know how to describe it, but one of the really cool things about Charborg's style is he makes his own music for like outros and just like weird bits. Uh, but they're all like actually really good. Like he's, he's actually <laughs> makes like really good beats and stuff. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of curious how, how that started. What was your first time you um, know, deciding to make that? And then when how it evolved. I remember the very first time I tried to make music, um, it was, a long time ago, it was when Mirror's Edge came out because I, I remember I was trying to get all the golden stars in Mirror's Edge and uh, I was very into dubstep. Uh, very <laughs> Hell yeah. Into Hell I yeah. The story. <laughs> there was this one song that had, um, I still remember the name of the song. It was, it was like, it was a remix of a song by Noisia called like Machine Gun or something like that. And um, it was just a song made out of like gunshot sounds and shit. And I was like, oh man, I could do that. <laughs> and then I, I downloaded like <laughs> FL Studio and yeah. like a trial of it, and I, I just messed around, and I ended up making this thing that was like, <laughs> <laughs> like just out of gunshots, and I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I said this. It's a rifle burst. <laughs> yeah, rifle burst. <laughs> it's a gun made it out was, of gun, or it's a song made out of gunshots. <laughs> it was similar oh, to that, and um, yeah, and so, I mean. I didn't ever try anything else after that, but then whenever my YouTube channel started getting a little more traction, I was like, I should try making music again. So I tried to make a little outro song, and then people loved it, even though it was awful. <laughs> and then um, I haven't been able to stop <laughs> because, like, here's the thing: I'll, I, I'm very self-conscious and very uh, hard on myself. I feel like so when I make something, I'm like very unsatisfied with it, but I. I feel like because people liked it, I just kept making myself do it until now I'm a lot more happy doing mm-hmm. it. But at first, man, I was like, huh. like I was only doing it because people were, would get mad if I didn't do it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but I feel like that helped me because now I'm like, I enjoy doing it. And it's like a, a, a hobby of mine that I just sort of picked up. You mentioned that, a couple of times, like twice now, I've noticed uh, when you were talking about red versus blue. How you would watch it and be like, oh, I can do that. And then you would just start mm-hmm. doing it. And then the same with this song. You listen to it and you're like, oh, I can do that. 
Do you find that that's how your like skill acquisition typically starts? Is something just seems approachable to you, so you you go after it? Uh, yeah, actually, I th I think that might be a major way that I do stuff because, like, there's plenty of times where, like, I had to learn how to like do some coding stuff for like, a couple different projects, and it was more like, yeah, I can do that, <laughs> and I just like started trying to figure out how to do it. So here's so, yeah, here's I an interesting follow up. Is there anything you don't think you can currently do. Huh. I think what what you were saying about with oh, fly. No, I can do I can do everything. <laughs> no. but yeah, fly. Uh, yes, I've I've never. I don't think I could go on a date with four hot uh, supermodels. Hmm. Let me see. Maybe. No, but maybe maybe like a big project like you were talking about with uh -huh. like a budget and stuff like that. Like. I feel like there's no way I would be able to wrangle something like that with like a lot of moving parts and like getting things from other people, but it might I, be something I that I approach it, small scale in like. I, well, here's here's like a the yes and to that. I mean, if you look at everything you've described so far about your career, and I, you've mentioned that you're kind of naturally self conscious about you know taking pride, I guess, in your work, but everything that you've done so far has been like, I guess I can do that. Like, I I bet I can do that, and you just kind of you know, try it and then it ends up working out or getting, you know, really good and yeah. people really like it and it's their feedback that's like kept you going. So it's it seems like you just kind of learn from doing. It's not so much you need to learn ahead of time. It's like you'll just do it and then, oh wait, that it wasn't so bad. I guess I can do this now. And you kind of, you know, on to the next thing and the next thing. So I think that's, you know, if you look at this, you know, what that next scale project could be the same way, then like, yeah, given a budget, given a team, like what? What would that look like? What would you know? I think you could be, do it just because you you have to, right? Yeah, and I think another thing that helps with that is just the nature of uh, YouTube and like content creation. Like, you, it's like if someone does YouTube, they're not just like they don't just like typically play a game and then send it off to be edited and stuff. I mean, I know there's like people who have a setup like that, but like I feel like being a YouTuber and stuff requires you to be able to do stuff like a, a whole variety of things like edit and then any problems you run into while editing and you know just managing stuff like that so i feel like that definitely helped if i uh you know like whatever i don't i'm losing my train of thought because i'm focusing on this fish <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean you got a big one yeah Does he? i yeah i 100 percent. i understand what you mean and i i think it's like bizarrely is for for all the vidcon panels that i've seen talking about inspiration and creative soul and stuff i do think that that's that's like the critical point where uh you can you can see something made by a professional and and or you know even though the term professional can be a little floaty but see it and not immediately be intimidated by the process of of learning how to get there um or or even being afraid to like f fail and and be weird at a new skill uh it's just that the ability to just be like, oh, I can do that, and then Google it, and then just start reading, and yeah, just put in the time, make the mistakes, and, and figure it out. That's such yeah, a that's good trait. Another thing, Googling, like, people, people, anybody can do anything, and that's that's such a cool thing. Like, if there's anything that you want to do, you can just find forums and, and documents mm -hmm. and tons of, like, videos all helping you on that exact thing. So that's definitely encouraging. I feel like if you're wanting to get into something like that. Has there, because I, I know you, I mean, with like your your kind of self-confidence around the content you make being this like struggle for you, I guess, your self-proclaimed kind of, you know, fight. Uh, what are some examples, I guess, of when you felt truly satisfied with your work and either from like the reaction you've gotten from someone else or, you know, you've actually finished something and you sat back and you're like, you know what, this this is good. Like I, this does, this feels like me. Um, I think I don't feel that until it's a little while after I've released, because you think you would think after you release something that you've been working on forever, uh, you would be just like happy and satisfied. But for me, I just kind of like, I can't read comments. I can't anything because I'm just like, I don't want to see what people are saying about me. And, uh, but like looking back on it, like that Grand Theft Auto thing, and then a lot of other projects, like now, looking back, I definitely feel a lot better. But dude, I'm just a wreck. I, like when I when I see people talking, I'm just like, that's what's weird about YouTube comments is it's always people talking about you. Like mm -hmm. you don't read it, 
And so it, it, it is. It isn't that weird. What a weird uh, like phenomenon. Because you're totally right, Charwork. Like, I feel like almost every creator reads those comments. Like, whether or not they read a few or all of them, they read yeah. those comments. And and honestly, people on YouTube know that, dude. They know. Yeah, like you They're can just, ask them, and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, they, I mean, of course." But then like they comment as if they don't know that. And yeah. It's, oh, it's hard to read. It it's gets the, in my head. There's such a there's such a culture, yeah, of of people who almost like think that YouTube is an ecosystem that comments is for just monstering on people, just trying to come up with the best like just just two point dunk on somebody that you possibly can. Yeah. Like that's the whole point of comments, and and it, and it's it's yeah, because uh, I've noticed that too, especially like even live streaming on YouTube. Some people treat chat like it's comments, and they talk mm -hmm. like you're not right there. It's yeah. very, very bizarre, and that's just that's just something that I found is is kind of endemic to YouTube as a as a website slash social media platform. And it's totally different on Twitch. Like when I stream, I, I have like the nicest chat. Everybody's <laughs> saying nice stuff. I I don't ever feel anxious about reading it. But like when I when I look at my analytics or whatever, and it pulls up the most recent like three comments, I just don't even look at it because it stresses me out. Like thinking about it, because I mean nobody's been like mean that I remember off the top of my head, but you remember it like in the moment you, uh, yeah, it really like tears you down. No, it, it does. And, and like over, I mean, having read those comments now for 10 years, just like Lawrence and Kraken actually. Yeah. Um, I think that, that sort of stuff really does wear you down. Like it, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. And actually switching platforms to Twitch, uh, really reinvigorated me when I, when I started streaming a few years ago on Twitch, because it Shit. was like, it was, uh, what happened? Kraken caught that big fine. Oh, I, tried, got, I, I poached. I poached again, and they caught. You got me fined for like a fucking tiny little fish yeah, too. It was, it was a one big pound. one. It was like a. It was it, like a nine. It was a pound. Yeah, it was a pound. license. Point nine. No, I'm a rebel. <laughs> That's right. Um, that, no, yeah, sorry. I, so I, I, it really wears you down. It does, at least for me. Um, and uh, that's sort of the weird. Uh, pro and con of making content on YouTube is that anybody can do it. You can do whatever you want. Like Charborg saw something and he was like, oh, you know what? I could try this. But then also any, anybody could comment on it. Yeah. Um, and anybody can can tear you down as a creator. Um, and uh, I'll just use this format to say, like I say pretty much every day, which is, hey, why not try say something positive <laughs> to, yeah. to a creator that you watch? Like, like, that's what the, the most confusing thing to me is if somebody's going to Charborg's channel over and over and over and they're like, they like your videos, Charborg, but they come and then they negatively comment. Like, why do that? Just don't yeah. watch, just stop watching if you don't like it. And instead, like, uh, leave a positive comment about something that you do like from Charborg's because because that will really encourage Charborg and every other creator you know, and it will make them feel better about creating content and, and ideally making them more of the stuff that you like. So. Yeah, and it's like I'm not I'm not like a baby. I don't like you know like sure, I don't yeah, see yeah. it and I'm like, why are you being mean to me? But it's definitely no, of course, like, of course. Being cyber like why well, like, yeah, I'm being cyberbullied over here. <laughs> like I can't think of any mean comments that I've received recently, but it's definitely like weird. I've seen people have you guys seen people be like, Well don't you don't be a public figure if you don't want to do criticism. Uh, yes. And it's yes. like what are you talking about? You're just being an idiot, like in my chat. <laughs> And like people always like if I ban someone on Twitch for just being annoying, then it's like a it's like a big thing. It's like no, dude, I'm just you're being annoying. <laughs> you oh, know what I mean? You're like censoring. You yeah, just can't I'm, take I'm negative criticism. Censor everyone. <laughs> censoring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Free speech. <laughs> there is. Sorry, you call me cringe in my Twitch chat. I'm leaving. You're you're leaving. Actually, there's the door. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> that is a weird sentiment. There are there are people that. They, I guess they're convinced that there are other people living in the sunlight and they're those, which, in the time machine, which one were the, was it the Morlocks that had to live underground? We'll go with that, oh, sure. I never read it. I never read it. Oh, uh, it, eh, it's not, not the best. But anyway, guy, just watch the Guy <laughs> Pierce movie that everyone remembers. Oh, I, I never saw that either. <laughs> oh. I, anyway, yeah, I'm striking out on my references right now. Um, <laughs> there, there are people on the internet that do feel like they're owed, they're owed a bite, you know? Like... That for some reason, they live with this bitterness or this resentment that other people are allowed to have fame and fortune, uh, like like your giant mansion, in Charborg. Forty made, million dollars. Made sure to hit the R that time. Yeah, four, four. Wait, four or four T? Forty million. I live in a mansion. Okay, I was about to say, uh, 
Yeah. You need I mean, to stick one your game up, but that's okay. That's internet's right about is YouTube pays, dude. <laughs> yeah. We Hell are all yeah. living like kings, Hell dude. yeah. I had we Panda Express it. for lunch, baby. Ooh. Yeah. Dude, I went to Bruce's house. He's got a fucking bidet. <laughs> that shit costs three 60, million at least. It actually costs $60. It was $60. Three sixty yeah. million dollars, yourself, dude. But that's all right. And I had to, and I had to hook it up myself. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's some people just exist in this this perpetual bitterness. And when they see anyone that they perceive as successful, um, they just they 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 view it as cosmic justice to go in on them to any degree. And mm-hmm. the, yeah, it, what's so weird is like the people who are successful now, thanks to uh, oh, you're getting a little getting a little under the leg shot there, Kraken. Don't tell him. That's he a doesn't that's know. a trick cast right there. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I let it slip. Yeah, there's there's just a crew of people out there, and the more the years go by, the more I, I realize you can safely just cut them out of everything, and you lose nothing. All you lose mm-hmm. is, the, is the negativity they bring. Um, but yeah, there's just some people who feel like the world owes them, and they try to get their pound of flesh by just, just being negative. Uh, and it's a shame, but it's not, it's not anyone's job to you know recoup those people or try and re-educate them. You can't just toss them out. Ooh, that's such a tiny little guy. You got the smallest fish yet, Kraken. Yeah. Look, hey, Trevor, I oh gotta my sell gosh. my fish. It's even smaller. <laughs> yeah. I gotta sell my fish. My, my fish box is full. I, I, I had to release all mine because I couldn't figure out how to sell them. You can sell Wait, them. Wait, what? Yeah, I just threw them back. I mean, they, they've been in my inventory for like, these were fish that I had the last time I played this like two years ago. So they <laughs> oh, were dead. Stink. I just they dumped stink. them back in the freaking pond. Yeah. Oh, no, they're all dead, man. Why'd you do that? <laughs> hey, I just re- reuse and recycle or whatever. <laughs> throw them back. Well, I, I, uh, I like this podcast because we talk to people that instead of going online and like leaving negative comments about other artists they saw, they went, hey, wait a minute, I could make that. And then did. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, pro- in my opinion, that's probably the most productive way of looking at art as being like, oh, you know, I could probably make, I could probably try yeah. that. Instead um, of, yeah. you know, if you got all this negative asshole energy, instead of channeling it at others, channel it into yourself and then become, you know, a creator like Charbork. That's how <laughs> he an, started. Be an asshole like Charbork. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I got out of that. You just call me an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gone back to re-create uh, your first video of getting hit by a car? <laughs> No, but that 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 is a video concept I have, but not that video. Um, I wanted to do a thing where I show how much better I've gotten at like making videos by recreating the very first video I made on my channel, which was just it was awful. But what if I what went even it? farther back? I, I went what? to like the car hitting video, and that's mm-hmm. how I, maybe that's how I reveal my face. I just go get hit by a car. Charbo, what, <laughs> oh what was what was what was the video you made that you want to remake? Um, it was this stupid thing. Like it was back before I even <laughs> knew like what kind of content I wanted to make. But yeah. it was um, I played Metal Gear Solid, and I just basically <laughs> like did a joke walkthrough of how to beat this mission. And the, the here the, the expert level comedy here was that um, um, I was saying something, and then the opposite was happening. So I would be like, so now you just. <laughs> Now you just, uh, it's a simple walk over here. You just walk this way. And then it wasn't a simple walk. I got blown up by a guy with a missile. And then I'm like, and now you quietly go over here. And then I loudly go over there. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't I like very it. good. <laughs> I like I it. That's comedy, like, dude. Yeah. I was thinking of doing a, a video now where it's like, I I play the same mission, but I'm playing it as if I'm watching that tutorial trying to beat the mission. And so oh. it's like holding like an iPad or something, like looking and it's like playing the video and it's, my dumbass <laughs> trying to make jokes and uh then me trying to follow it and then it just being infinitely more funny than what the original one was i've been wanting to do that but I haven't jumped on it yet i think that'd be a good a good video idea a little I, I think it's i think it's a good idea um and i'll come and leave a positive comment on your video when you do it dude i would appreciate that more than you know <laughs> <laughs> it's those positive ones that keep me going it really is. It really is. I'm yeah. glad that YouTube added those little that little heart because I use that heart all the time now. Yeah. To, like let people know, like, hey, man, I saw your positive comment. And it really helps. I heart this. That's what I say yeah. when I click it. I say I heart this. What <laughs> do you guys remember? Any negative comments that stuck with you just because of how ridiculous and funny they are? Oh yeah. Um, I, oh, I I I always have one at the top of my head because it was. Uh, 
I had I was incredibly vulnerable when I left. So when I left G4 and moved to Machinima, I had never really done on camera stuff before. I, I, I knew I could do it, but I just hadn't done it. And uh, I we went and did a video at CES, uh, me and Kale. And uh, Kale's good on camera. And I was, you know, just still kind of learning. And uh, one of the comments, the comments was something to the effect of, um, boy, Bruce Green is right, meaning I was new to it. Oh, and oh, that's um, clever, which is the worst. If it's, it's clever, worst. it's good. It was the worst. And that one hurt. <laughs> that one hurt because that one got me like right exactly where it should have been, you know, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm sure that person went on about their day and <laughs> never thought about it again. And, and never thought about it again. That, and here you are. Clever pun they it. made. Yeah. Yep. And here I am talking about it literally 10 years later. So it's a. Uh, I want everybody to know that if you leave those sorts of comments on YouTube videos, words hurt people. They hurt. It's like when, when it when it's like that and you're insecure about something and then you get a comment literally about that thing. That is the worst. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It really what, is. Have you considered though that maybe they meant green as in green as in go on a traffic light and they think that you are going places. Giving you the two <laughs> thumbs up. This guy's no. got it where it counts. Maybe, maybe you just had your head in the wrong place this whole that's time. A, that's, that's a real stretch, Craig. Can I, I'm not yeah, sure well. I can even go along with that one in the improv uh, <laughs> yeah. sense of the word. He's like, no, this Bruce Green is someone I can get behind. What else do I get behind? Green lights. Green lights. Uh, Type that out yeah. and send oh. a comment. Yes, sir. I, I look forward to seeing you in the next big Hollywood picture. <laughs> Oh man, that one hurt. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> that one hurt. It did. It really hurt. I don't know. I, I kind of went uh, through a crucible, man. It was uh, who? It's it's kind of weird to think about in retrospect. But uh, when I moved back to LA, um, and then like started working out of the machinima offices again, uh, by the grace of Bruce, uh, was given more on screen time, and and I was a pretty volatile person back then. Because I was getting over divorce. Back and, then. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Think about this, Craig, and I've mellowed out. Consider that. No. I mean, a lot no. of this has been chronicled. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, didn't it was it was a it was a force of chaos in videos. So I, I think it was ultimately constructive for the content, but did not endear me to the audience at all. And then there were some other like there were some other incidences mm. that like either I, I acted out on camera or just like mistakes that were kind of edited in a way to make them more suggestive than I than they were meant to be. And some of that shit still follows me around. Um, I can see people bringing up stuff as proof that I'm like, I don't know, like a, a creeper or something like that. So more than just mean comments, man, some of those videos have created entire personas that some people have, have run with for mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. something I got to live with is that there's, a, there's a, a certain understanding of me by a certain crew of people. And they use that uh, as, as validation of their, their image of me. And they and like kind of like I was alluding to before, they'll use that as a uh, as like permission to do other things. So yeah, that's not so great. That's just life on the internet, though. I guess uh, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. because of that, I don't know that I can remember individual comments. It's more entire campaigns of of negativity. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Geez. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I remember any individual comment either. But I think and Charber, you can probably relate to this. It's when you kind of keep some parts of your uh, your brand, your personality, or just you know yourself, kind of a private from your audience. It's that's like always going to be a, a like a, a sore spot or like a you know a thing that you're reluctant to change. Yeah. Um, and for me, I first started making videos uh, only using text because I was literally 14, and I was like, if I if they know that I'm 14, they're not going to watch me. They won't. That's like right. Me. No, I'm yeah. a speaker. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I still remember like one of the first videos that I started, uh, I, I like used my voice in because people were asking like, you know, and it was like I've done, I've been doing this for like a year or more. And I was like, all right, well, I think I'll try it. And then to get like any comment where they're like, oh, my God, he's a child. And like the <laughs> shit, I immediately just like shut it down. I was like, all right, I can never I'll never talk again. I like went and hid, <laughs> hid from the Internet. Uh, you come on and I you're mean, like, hey, everybody, it's cracking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, well, it's uh, I think I mean, so one of the things at Charberg, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about your decision to to not have revealed your face and 
kind of, you know, to keep your persona kind of a private thing. Um, but I, I was that way for a long time too. So I, I totally yeah. get it. And but, I don't yeah. know, maybe it, it's such a weird thing because I'm not like, I'm not ugly or anything, but I mean, I just, I just feel like once you do it, you can't go back. And I don't know why mm -hmm. I'm getting hung up on it. Like I would love to have stream things where I do like a cam and like just mess around and you know, all, all sorts of stuff. I would love to do that, but I just feel for whatever reason, like once I do it and if I regret it later, there will be no going back. Mm -hmm. Like forever ago, I had this idea for a video when I was, when I was very small on YouTube, I, I had like 10,000 subscribers and I was like, it was still before I even knew what kind of content I wanted to make. And I was like, um, I'm going to do a, a, a video with my face and, and have, you know, like all this stuff planned. And then looking back now, I'm like, if I would have done that now for one video and people knew what I looked like for just a stupid video and then I never again, I don't know. I mean, it's weird. It's like, I feel like I'm going to regret it if I do it, but I don't know why. Well, you, I, feel, I feel like you have to, if you're going to do it, you have to do it and then continue on with your face on everything. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. other than, other than like, obviously you making a narrative project, but like if you're just going to do streams or whatever, it's like now you got to have a face cam Charbor. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, I talked to somebody who had that problem where they did it and then um, people expected it every time when they didn't want to do it every time. And I don't know. I, I, I also worry. Yeah. Something like that would happen. Doesn't Jerma get away um, with that? Like people know what he looks yeah. like, but his, he doesn't ever show his cam. That, that's true. Yeah. He'll do like every once in a while just for like a little joke or something. I've never really yeah, like I, watched his I really do though. cam as well. I, yeah. I think it's it's not necessarily a requirement once you've shown your face. It's really how you build your brand and community. I mean, like people watch, you know, me for a lot of like the role play. Or I mean, I guess they, they do. I don't actually know why they watch me. But if, if they do, then <laughs> maybe it's for like the role play, the characters, or the voices and stuff. And, and having a cam can like detract from that. Like if you see a face... And they're making a voice that doesn't seem to match that face mm -hmm. yeah. that can like pull people out of it. So sometimes it's nicer just to, to like not, not worry about it, you know, just like yeah. make it be its own thing. Oh. And I, I mean, bed, like, so bed banana is kind of mutual friend of Charbor. I think it's actually how we first met. Yeah. Uh, it was That's through the bed. The only reason I have friend. my friend group is because of bed. Literally for whatever reason <laughs> he decided like, Oh yeah, this guy's funny. Whenever it was, I made some stupid edit of like, Whatever I don't know, dude. I don't know which it video was to, that. It was your uh, oh. um, Dark Souls. I mean, like some stupid edit of that. And I'm like, that. That's the whole reason I know everybody. Like, my, the entirety of my friend group is because of Bed. I owe it all. Owe it all. Yeah. I mean, he he did a face reveal in kind of a a subtle small way, and part of that was because I know from talking to him, like he was just tired of worrying about it. Like, yeah, I. I, I had felt the same way when I did my face reveal was because <laughs> there were people in my Discord talking about like campaigns against me. This was this is way old Kraken lore, but like the really Lord. like yeah, this is like fifteen year old Kraken lore. But like there were people in my in my Discord that managed to get a hold of pictures of me somehow and were trying to it wasn't my it wasn't Discord back then, it was Steam groups. And they were trying to get them out there in like a, in like, you know, you better do this or else we'll leak these pictures of you. And like, they'll Jeez. force a face reveal. And I'm like, this sucks. All right, fine. I guess I'll just do it myself. And I just, you know, did it myself to take power away from them. Hmm. And suddenly they weren't relevant anymore and they went away. So it was like, you know, that, that was worth it in its own right. And it was it didn't end up being a big deal, but like, you know, if you build your brand around being a, like an anonymous character, then that's a different thing, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like in my case, it's not that it's built around people not knowing what I look like or something. But, like, I mean, for streams in particular is what I feel like I would uh, I would use a face cam for. Not every time or anything, but, yeah, it just seems fun. Like what you were talking about with Jerma, just every once in a while or, you know, for yeah. whatever. Hmm. So, or then you can do a mustache bit like I did where you shave your whole beard and you just keep the mustache and <laughs> people people love that. Yeah, it just dude, ruins I would, I would your social crazy life. stuff. I would shave off the mustache and glue it to the top of my head like a little 
Like a little no, hair. Oh no. Little Maybe you shouldn't patch. do a face reveal then. Let's I'm gonna say I that. do crazy stuff. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to catch a normal stream. I would always be gluing hair in places and always stuff. with hair, this guy. <laughs> yeah, this guy this guy is a fish and he loves hair. <laughs> Go figure. Takes all kinds on twitch.tv, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh uh shoot, I had I had such a good question banked up and now I dropped it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh chat was mentioning, have you ever given any thought to the VTuber angle? Maybe you could just invent a persona. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I wanted to do a joke stream where I bought a uh, little camera and I just had like a VTuber stream. Hell yeah. But, um, be a cute little anime girl. Yeah, I could, yeah. And I could do that you could mustache. Be thing fish. I was talking about. <laughs> and then I could finally do the mustache. Yeah, you can put your mustache wherever you want I mean, in real time. Well, there's actually a huge opportunity, Trevor, because like the. You could be a fish, dude. You know. Yeah, like the talking like bass, you know, like that, <laughs> yeah. that classic toy. Oh, Billy the Bass. You could literally, you could literally be a talking bass. <laughs> I, I just face like 90 degrees away from the camera, and whenever I talk, I rotate yeah. towards yeah. the camera. And <laughs> oh, yes. You ain't nothing yes. but a hell, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be awesome. That would be fish tastic, dude. But for like three hours, just that. <laughs> You could just hear him just shut up when I said fish tastic. I'm sorry. I, I had to slip it in. I had You're to. Ruining my life. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get you to say it eventually. <laughs> Why does my character have four fingers? Look at the freaking rod. Oh my god, you're right. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Wait, the index. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Okay. No. Oh no. One of the fingers is hidden behind the rod, dude. Yeah. That. Come down. Come down. Oh, there it's it is. Okay. There it is. Yeah. It's got the relaxed yeah, yeah. grip. You don't want your. You don't want your shoulders seizing up when you're in your yeah, dude, sixth you hour day? fishing. Huh? You gotta. You gotta keep limber. I'll keep it loose on the docks. Shit gets real on the docks. <laughs> it's <laughs> you know it's uncomfortable that our characters have not said a single word to each other in character. I can change for that. the last hour. Yeah, do you guys have emotes? You gotta have emotes. Is there in game voice? I think there's VoIP, yeah. Where did he go? Your character just vanished on my screen. That's how fishing is though. Yeah. Haven't you guys ever you have you actually you gone talk? real fishing? No. You just sit there what? and hang out. That's the whole point. I thought you you also like, you know, talk about your wives yeah. and you all that. scare the fish. Hallmark movies I mean, have can't... massively misdirected me about the value of fishing. Uh, I no. suppose so. No, no. You go out you go out and sit next to your buddy and you say like a few words to them at the start and then you sit there for eight hours, <laughs> drink like literally fifteen beers. <laughs> Uh, and then when you when you guys are done, you go, hey, are you done? You go, yep. And then you pack up and go yep. home. <laughs> <laughs> that, there's it. two there's two times you talk. At the yep. start, you say, ready to start? And they say, yep. And yep. then at the end, you Again. say, you done? Yep. yep. And then and you go home. <laughs> you, have to, you have to synchronize, like just like we do when we open our podcast. You got to synchronize clap, though, where you have to both at the same time say, begin fish. And then, and then the 15 hours goes. <laughs> uh, someone in chat, an experienced fisherman, says that talking actually scares the fish away. It does. So. Oh. See, that's why you have to be whisper quiet. I thought it was just wife bad. Wife bad. I mean, you can they feel it. Nod. Yep. yep. You can feel the, the hatred. But yeah. You don't the mutual <laughs> bond over the absolute hatred of your loving spouse. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to head down to the lake and fashion some shoes out of air horns and just walk around. And then Aww. everyone's going to hate me. I'm going to go. Burr, burr, burr. You're going to be hearing me from a mile and a half away. All the fish are going to retreat back to the darkest depths of the pond. And here I come Dude, up the freaking up the dock. We got a regular. You're the worst. We got a regular Jamie Kennedy over you're here. The worst. I know you're the worst. It's <laughs> big asshole making, energy. You making prank it's videos a... now on YouTube? <laughs> I should start. I could call up some crazy stuff. Dude, imagine. I bet you could. Imagine that fucking title on YouTube. I, I made that. air horns into shoes yeah. and scared away a lake of fish. <laughs> Fisherman and it's just a fish. Everyone would hate me if I had a freaking. Prank I would. Channel. I would click on that too. That's a crazy video. Concept. <laughs> Um, why, why are you, is a fish your, your avatar anyway? Uh, it goes back to when I picked my name, Charborg, it was, um, it, remember that day I was talking about, I want to do YouTube videos. I was like, what, well, first step, I got to come up with a name. And so I picked, um, I picked Charborg, which was the name of a song by my favorite band back then. And, uh, and then I had to think of a profile picture and I knew Char was a fish. So I just found, Wait, what's, Char. The, what's the, what's the. What's the name of the band? It's called Pinback. Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I like them a lot. Dude, hell yeah, Pinback. But yeah, yeah that's that, cool. They had a song called Charborg, and I think the only reason I used that was because um, it was my Xbox name or something, and uh, I think I just tried a, d a couple different song names from them, and then Charborg wasn't taken, so I was like, all right, I'll take it. So all right. not really too deep. I just, I just, the logical. Uh, Next step, find a name, 
Find a picture. Char is a fish. Okay. I'm doing it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, how, I feel like how did most you get people's alias was... stories. <laughs> yeah, sounded a little accusatory. <laughs> well, well, I was uh, born. Really? And my parents named me after my uh, dad and my grandfather and my great grandfather. Oh, so you Bruce the third, fourth? I'm the fourth, yeah. You should wow. start calling yourself that. That sounds really I, uh, Bruce the fourth. It, does, it does, sounds like a, it sounds like a king. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like sounds I'm like you in, should be living in this forty million dollar mansion, not me. I sound like an, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. I should be, but it sounds like an inbred king is what it sounds like to me. <laughs> that's why I don't. I don't use no. I actually really I use the fourth for official titles, like uh, you know, on my driver's license and shit like that. Oh, cool. I didn't what know about the fishing you? license, so you don't get your fish hauled away like Kraken has been. Well, that, that's the thing. <laughs> you don't need fourth. a fishing license to fish. The fish don't care if you have a license. What is the state? They'll, they'll the hop back now? in your pocket anyway. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, does the state own the fish now? Oh. Wait, hold on. The fish is nature. Wait, I want to know how Kraken got his name. Oh, uh, you didn't know that story? Uh, I, I can't remember if you told me or not. I, I feel like I, I it, it comes up every once in a while, but it's it was basically, I was a six-year-old that would, I basically invented LARPing without realizing, <laughs> um, where I would be on like the recess field in kindergarten or whatever. And I'd be with like all my six-year-old friends, and I would tell them a story, and they would play the characters of that story. And based on what actions they did, I would then like react to it with a new story, and like it would keep evolving. And for some reason, I named the antagonist, like the the avatar of this story, Kraken. Um, I don't, I, I literally cannot tell you where. Huh, bro, a oh, fly just landed on your fry. fishing rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna eat that? I, I, <laughs> wife bad. <laughs> oh, what a dragonfly! Oh, you just communed with nature, bro. Yeah, that was that's special. But I will never tell my my colleague about it because that's against the the rules of fishing. It's rules, yeah. yeah Sorry, I can go ahead. To, yeah, my bad. Uh, um, it was a magic moment. <laughs> it was a magic moment. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't remember actually where the name itself came from, but I remember the character that it was based off of, and like you know the the plot of this game it was basically like i think i saw like a fucking like old resident evil game in an arcade and was like i love the idea of a haunted mansion and so i was like i'll i'll make the antagonist like the owner of this mansion and they like have a bunch of rooms that were all wildly different and based on where the players went they would see different things and have to overcome different puzzles and stuff i love imagining a little six-year-old you <laughs> like standing there telling this grand story to everybody and they're picking yeah. their nose and eating boogers <laughs> and dirt. Well, yeah. they, they were really, they, they got really into it. it, but it was like definitely this thing of, it was before the kind of tropes of like nerd and jock had developed. So like some of the guys playing with us were like also like big into sports and others were just like, that's all they did was play with me in this game. Uh, whenever like recess would come around. And I remember this one day, uh, they like someone kicked like the fucking kickball over a fence and it was gone. So all the sports kids were like, "Hey, can we play with you? We don't have anything to play." <laughs> and so I like wrote in like I tried to write in these sports kids and like almost all of them just gave up instantly. Like I don't know what I expected, but they they did not understand what was going on. But some of them liked it and they stuck around and that was nice. I like the idea of you stuffing a character sheet and like a handful of dice into somebody's hands. <laughs> and you're like, "We're gonna play yeah. here." <laughs> Start running them through the rules. Yeah. Take them to the take them to the chalkboard with all the rules drawn on it. It's, it's I I never played Dungeons and Dragons in in school. Like Me the either. first time I played was like I think God like sophomore or junior year of college, and then I was like, oh my God, what have I been missing? And, and suddenly it all clicked. I was like, I have been doing this. This is literally what well, I know, have been doing. You know why? I mean, like I, I would say most video games. Uh, like RPGs especially are designed after Dungeons and Dragons. They mm -hmm. they are Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. JRPGs kind of hit on like progression simulators. Western RPGs were always trying to recreate a campaign of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it's pretty cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, I when I where I grew up, <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons were, were was still referenced as a gateway to hell. Uh, Me too. Unironically, no. yeah, I. No. I. <laughs> So it, it was weird to sort of get some distance from all that and be like, oh, this is just nerds like eating snacks and, and making up stories about dragons. Like there's nothing dangerous here. 
um, similar vibes. Like the first time I listened to metal, like listen to Metallica, I was like, is this what you guys are afraid of? Damn, this is pretty sick though. Uh, <laughs> it's just weird to kind of all the all the things that used to be a threat to culture and just how laughably stupid that is now. Like uh, the first year of The Simpsons, everybody <laughs> thought that The Simpsons was going to send you to hell if you watched it because it was a people a cartoon. That? Oh, they did cartoon with with adult themes and uh like back in like 1989 or whatever it was when it first came out i was i think it was nine or ten my parents were like you you're too you're too young to watch it i was like oh man well it also but, depicted a family that didn't want to go to church which is like yeah was a yeah. big deal back then i guess for me it was just reality but yeah man there were there were some interestingly progressive things about that show Times, times have changed. Uh, sorry, Charboard. I don't want to... want to wax nostalgic about the early 90s? <laughs> yeah, Sidetrack <laughs> side side off of you. Um, well, Charborg, what are you making currently? What are you doing right now? Can you tell us, like... Brother, any I'm part just of... fishing, and you're getting in the way of that. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, life's bad. Mm -hmm. Got him. No, I, I've been trying to, like... What I was talking about with, um, like, the high-effort stuff nonstop... I've been trying to kind of alternate where I'll do something that's more high effort and then something that I can just like easily do where I'm not stressing out about like, oh my God, is this going to be good enough? Because just from the, from the get go, it's just going to be something that's more simple than, you know, something crazy. So I've been trying to do that and I don't know, I kind of worry about people receiving it bad, but I don't know. Do you guys, you guys know what I mean? Like as far as wanted to take a break from doing that high effort stuff. It's kind of hard oh, yeah. for me to yeah. gauge if I should even be doing that or just That's been my entire doing year. It. Yeah. Uh I mean variety is important. Um it is it is it's like you can you can use the same creative process to produce a variety of output, but even I think it's even more important to reassess that creative process and completely change the way you're doing things. So yeah, if you're if you're kind of tired of a certain creative flow, or a certain creative output, and you have the means to mix it up, buy it, like, do it. Why not, man? There's only yeah. so many years on this planet, it would be a shame to just spend them kind of doing what you feel like you have to, versus kind of exploring what you may want to. Yeah, and I, I don't know, maybe it's not that, maybe it's all just f stemming from uh, that feeling of, is this gonna be good enough or not, and then making me make decisions based around that, because maybe the only reason I'm having trouble with these bigger projects is because of like self-doubt and stuff you know hmm. maybe i just gotta work on that and then and maybe the process will go down a lot what i hmm. what i found is also like with big projects you can do a big project all on your own and then it takes years and it can be hard to like maintain clarity of vision through that entire process uh you can also kind of partner with other people but something that i've learned that's really fascinating and and challenging to embrace sometimes is that when you start to share a vision with other people you got to be a little like be willing to budge about where it ends up um, because, you know, if it's other people's creativity going into it, the mix is just going to be different than if it's mm. purely out of your own brain. So sometimes to me, that's that's what the big like a B is versus a bigger or a smaller project. If it's something I can do all on my own, then the, to me, the challenge is just making my vision real. But if it's with other people, then it's like I have to sort of back off of the vision a little bit and then just mm. kind of go with the flow a lot more. So yeah. sometimes like what's the creative goal is it, is it to get out specifically what's in my mind or is it to learn these skills that i will like for mm. other projects or is it to yeah kind of kind of ride the current a little more and, and collaborate with people and see what comes out of that yeah that's a good point I think that's, yeah i think that's a great point that's i think i can totally relate um as someone that started making videos purely by themselves for the majority of their their life i think going into college and you know a bit after that is really when I started actually working with others in a creatively collaborative way. Um, and that was like a huge, that was a, that was a Jimmy Neutron brain blast moment when I realized <laughs> that like, you know, we all have very specific and different skills and, and creative kind of uh, perspectives that we can bring to a project and that you can enrich it with the more of those that you bring. So um, yeah, I, I, I think that's a great piece of advice. Um, but it's also difficult to pull off on YouTube, I feel, because it is such a kind of siloed uh, medium in its own kind of way. Um, 
Twitch is a little bit easier because you can just, you know, stream to other people. But if you want to make like long form content on YouTube, uh, it's a hard thing to, to, I mean, you guys obviously, you know, as Bruce and Lawrence, you guys have done that for years with your, your different, the groups you've been in, but it's, it's a huge undertaking as you know, uh, compared to just doing something solo. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, long form, but yes, it was like we were creating, we were trying to create a narrative in, in every video, like, you know, almost every video had some sort of comedy mm -hmm. narrative that we, that we wanted to, you know, put forth. Um, versus like a three or four or five hour Twitch stream, which may sometimes just be, hey, come on and chill with everybody. Um, and there's no necessary, you know, there's not like a, a goal to it. Um, it's, it's interesting because like when we branched out just into like a, a sketch show territory or like, you know, like a, um, a, like not a television show, but a show with a television budget, when we would have to, when we made a few of those uh, at Rooster Teeth, Man, the work that goes into those, like I can't even imagine making a movie, like spending two or three years on a two and a half hour uh, piece of art and then putting it out and then having a bunch of like <laughs> armchair critics just shit on it. And you're like, yeah. dude, <laughs> I spent so much time like writing and directing <laughs> and like all this other stuff. And they're just like, nah, this is stupid. That's why <laughs> yeah, like, it's so bad for a movie because it's like, it's like you just Google the name of the movie and you see on the side all the people and what they think of it, like recommended reviews and all this stuff. Yeah. And like everybody's talking about it. I don't know it's how yeah. <clears throat> when like I imagine like being a director and like maybe the I think what would cut in even more than just just some dude with a YouTube channel and a beard screaming about how bad your movie is, is if like a critic accurately points out problems with your film. And they like kind of put it on you or the creative forces, whereas there were other things behind the scenes you're not allowed to talk about that sort of force the creative output of, of a certain thing. That would drive me insane. It's like being held accountable for the outcome of something when there's all these factors behind the scenes that changed yeah. it. And I know true professionals, like they either know how to work the system to, to overcome those things or they're just professional enough to not complain about them. But <laughs> I don't know that I would have that capacity. <laughs> and, and this is like career ending stuff. But if like if I made a movie and it was bad and I truly felt like it was it was like the actor was being an asshole or like the 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 studio came by and demanded all these cuts or anything like that. I don't know that I could like quietly sit there and bite my tongue when people are saying this movie's mm. trash, when I'm like, but they cut out, they cut out like 40 minutes of it. And that was the important part. Like I would, I would probably lose my mind and end my career immediately. <laughs> if, <laughs> if I saw one comment that was holding me accountable for something that was beyond my control. <laughs> so the, the people's like director's abilities to just really calmly sort of weather all that and be professional about it. And uh, I, I envy that. Uh, <laughs> that's why I don't, I don't think I'll ever be in that position. Cause I don't think I have that diplomacy. Or at least I would definitely have to learn it. Do you think that's partly a, a result of our like origin on these new platforms of like YouTube and Twitch where it is so immediate and you're almost expected to, you know, have some sort of response and a conversation with the viewers versus hmm. traditional media where it's like very much one sided. That's a that's a good yeah. point. Yeah, I guess we're all conditioned to be transparent. Whereas mm -hmm. and and I and I've thought a lot about this, whereas like traditional Hollywood, there, there's almost a, a, a permanent uh, and, and uh, implemented degree of opacity. Like, you don't get to see the process usually. Uh, like, I remember when DVDs came out and there started to be a lot of, like, making of content on the DVD. That was pretty cool because it started to erode the walls between the professionals mm -hmm. who are making that mm -hmm. media and us yeah. who can see, like, now we can see how it's done and see, like, the art director talked about what they did, see the set designer doing their work. That stuff was super, super neat and hopefully... Uh, kind of like you had mentioned how like red versus blue would was that thing that we're like oh I can do that I like to think about how maybe all that bonus content for somebody who wanted to do lighting or rigging was like oh I can do that that's right there yeah but I feel like twitch it, I mean YouTube was a step further in that direction because it was a bunch of like semi-professionals or what's the word prosumers stepping into the ring and like teaching themselves how to edit and how to use cameras mm -hmm. and how to light I mean twitch yeah if there's a problem if there's a problem with the stream chat howls at you about it and then since you're the streamer you immediately like try to address it so yeah you're right there's that there's that uh there's that call and repeat of uh of feedback that i guess i guess personally i'm 100 percent conditioned to want to address like uh, yeah I, I i guess everything about the social networks i've been on have rewarded transparency so it's weird to think about how that wouldn't be a virtue in other circumstances 
And it's like, I wonder if someone like Will Smith or something is like reading through YouTube comments about like a clip <laughs> from a movie or something, you know, like it, it just seems that like, that's not mm. what it's like. He's got to have I mean, people it, that like comment and then give him a sentiment report, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sentiment report. Like this, statistics. <laughs> yeah, like a a user names one positive comment that is taken out of context. I have I only like I only have a very little uh, experience in that, but I but that's what I did. I mean, like I came from the world of television, where I, we produced a television show for four or five years called Attack of the Show, and we didn't we didn't see comments or anything like that. Like occasionally our segment would get posted online on our website, and we would see a few comments here and there or whatever, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. None of it was ever posted on YouTube. So like, we just knew that nobody was watching it. <laughs> you know, we just knew, we knew the ratings were low and, uh, and that, was all, that was it. And so it was interesting to go directly to YouTube after that, because then I could put something up and immediately get feedback on it. And I actually really enjoyed it. Um, for all, the, all of its negativity, I, I really did enjoy it because there, there were certain times that they would say things like, oh yeah, I actually do need to fix that. Or like, oh, that, that's a, that's a good note or like, oh, that's not a bad idea. And it helps sort of get the sense for what you're trying to make. If you're trying to make something, uh, you know, for an audience, like, like Lawrence was saying before, it's like, if you just want to make something to make it, you should just do that, put it on YouTube and then turn off comments. Um, but like, if you're looking to like make something that people want to watch or that, that they like, uh, and like want to help, you know, be a, be a part of the process of, um, the creativity of making it then it really helps. So I made that transition and I always, I wonder what people think of that now, like what, you know, traditional Hollywood directors or producers Mm -hmm. actually think of it. And because my guess is, and the reason I say this is not, it's not a guess. It's a, it's a, it's something I've heard many times. Usually they're just like, fuck them. (laughs) The the answer is almost always fuck them. Like it's almost always like the, a traditional Hollywood producer director would be like, this is stupid. They, they, they clearly don't know anything about production. They don't know anything about block, you know, whatever. So uh, I don't give a shit what they had to say. <laughs> um, and so that's, uh, it's pretty freeing for them to, to just be like, it doesn't matter what they say. We're going to make what, uh, what we're going to make. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's the right move or not. I really don't. It's it's you have to have a, a weird mix, right? If if you take everyone's feedback as a hundred percent well intentioned and a hundred percent genuine, you will go insane. Um, yeah, like like Charbor, yeah, clearly. Uh, so it's <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be. I think everybody, every individual, has to decide kind of like what they're doing it for. You know, are they doing it for positive feedback? Are they doing it for acknowledgement of their vision? Are mm-hmm. they doing it to like to be more popular and have their name spread around so their career grows? Like, there's all sorts of motivations. I think I think what the the easiest thing to do and what I like what I've seen out of a lot of directors, Bruce, when you like kind of throwing back to commentary and stuff, most directors know exactly the movie they want to make, and mm. they don't care. Like if the audience doesn't get it, then the audience is wrong. If the studio wants to change it, the studio is wrong. This is the right movie to make, um, and they they all of their discussions kind of go there. Uh, so having it's interesting how it seems like a lot of movie directors do have a vision. I think the very smart ones know how to compromise with the audience or the audience expectations. But some of the some of the most popular films have come from directors who are just like, this is exactly what I'm going to make. And it's incidentally popular. I don't think they really intended it for it to be. But then like you have people like J.J. Abrams who somehow know how to make popcorn movie or crowd pleasing hits over and over. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what their career is based on, it seems like. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's such a I feel like everyone's got to set that boundary somewhere. And some of the it, I do notice that. Some of the people who tend to send that, set that boundary way far to the spectrum of like, I am right and everyone else is wrong, they tend to be the ones who kind of get their way and, and get, their, mm-hmm. get their projects made. Um, Charbor, Charbor what do you, has that ever kind of crossed your mind? Like, is there, are there, is there time you've actually taken audience feedback and, and like used it in your current project or projects in the future? Mm, no, not really. Yeah. I think it's yeah. like, like, the negative feedback isn't ever something that really sways my opinion or like makes me want to change anything. Maybe when it was really, really early on and I didn't have any self-confidence when I was making stuff, but Mm -hmm. like now it's more like I'll see if I see negative feedback, it's more about um, like something I was already self-conscious of, like you were talking about earlier, Um, like with the Bruce green, like, Oh, you're green. But Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, 
like that's the stuff that really more gets to me and i don't know because criticism now it's more like what you were saying like i ha- i have the idea of what i want this to be and if you don't get it like i mean just don't watch the video it's not for you like whatever so nothing really like that like i don't feel like i'm ever um trying to adhere to what somebody wants it's more just uh when someone makes fun of my laugh, I'm like, oh, come on, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. I laugh loud and annoying. Okay, stop. <laughs> Stuff like that. It's Chabro, that's your laugh. Don't let yeah. anybody tell you different. Own fuck it. Fuck them. Yeah. Own it. Fuck them. Did you say that? I made a fucking Sims video where I was laughing so loud. And it, it's, it, I had to, like, I had to drag me down to, like, negative 400 decibels because <laughs> I, was, I was just screaming. Hey, you were so experiencing I mean, genuine joy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just happened to sound like the wailing of a banshee. Can you say the same uh, YouTube commenter, or are you living a miserable life? Yeah, when's the last just time you belly yeah. laughed at The Sims? You Imagine a, a quiet laugh. Imagine those people with sad sacks out there, and they laugh, and they go... <laughs> they say LOL, that, but they're not LOL. And that's the LOL-ing. highest they ever get. Right? Uh, yeah. The disingenuous yeah. LOL. Yeah. If you ever say LOL, you better be... Oh, damn. Like, if you're LMAOing... <laughs> I want to. I want to. You would have fucking roll. I want to. I want to. I want to oh, hear no. you. If you're raffling, if I want, I, oh, you better be yeah. rolling. <laughs> I gotta see some Wait, video what, footage. I gotta see some. What is LMAOing? Uh, laugh, is, laugh my ass off. Well, I know, but like, what does that literally mean? I don't know. I guess you're laughing so hard that your buttocks are engaged in violent vibration. <laughs> oh, I better see that. Yeah, I better see that clip of that ass juice. You're laughing and shaking your little tush. I gotta see it. Don't say LMAO if you don't mean it. Don't send your clips to Charborg if, uh, of your butt. All right, don't do that. Don't do that. It's. I mean, maybe he's into that. No, no, don't do it. For don't him. do that. No, no, I don't want that. Char, it's uh, it's it's interesting. You mentioned that you didn't really, you don't haven't really solicited feedback from audiences because when you talked about, so you talked about like doing a stream, finding an emergent narrative, and then sort of building it out with narrative structure. Do you ever take cues from the audience about where that narrative is or where it could go? Like if you just um, see chats popping at a particular like, oh, this character did this and it implies all of these things about them. Like, yeah, does that ever I'll, weigh in with your process? I'll add stuff like that. And like if, if I have a popular Twitch clip that um, that is really funny or like of a certain segment that everybody really liked, then yeah, I definitely will look into uh, adding that into the video. But I, I think it's mostly negative feedback that I'm sort of thinking about like, Mm. It's like I don't really see somebody say like, like, um, I don't know what. Like, why do you have the narration here? This is stupid. And I don't, I don't say oh, I'm gonna stop doing narration because like that, that doesn't really like get to me or anything. Because I know, like, I'm happy with what I'm making. You know what I mean? But as far mm. as like positive stuff, like, yeah, I definitely take that into consideration. Like, I look heavily on what, like what was going on during the stream like if there's this really funny arc that sort of happened and emerged then i i really heavily want to put that in a video because everybody loved it while it was on stream so i feel like it's more Mm -hmm. of a funny thing i always is that is that what you're asking about oh yeah for sure the um the communal aspects of of narrative direction are wild and yes we are literally talking about dungeons and dragons again to a degree but it's it's just so cool that um chat like it may not be an individual saying i think this is what this character should do but just sort of by monitoring the collective kind of heat from the audience and what they're responding to can help you really t- tune in on the elements that people are would, yeah. would be excited to see uh, uh, like bruce That's, what you were I, talking about with youtube the feedback yeah yeah absolutely yeah there's actually it, an if, entire arc that happened in my video because of a twitch comment i i it's <laughs> like i can pull up the vod and show like the exact segment um because with making videos including twitch like that like having twitch on the side it does sway the way that the the like, stream is going and there's one part where um i'm like kind of goofing around and just messing around on the sims and i'm like like somebody said what if this happened and i'm like oh my god that's how i'm ending the video that's a very funny idea so then the entire stream mm. changed to be focused around like doing mm. this funny joke and i don't yeah, think about it in the time end. it's just like it's like, oh yeah, this would be funny just for stream. But then, like, looking back now at my finished video that I have, like, that would the video would not be like this because I wouldn't have thought of that. Like, I, I, the video could have gone somewhere entirely different. It was seeing that comment on the Twitch chat that made me, like, 
pursue it. So yeah, definitely. That's that's awesome. See, see chat, you guys do make a difference. Yeah. They, they think we don't read them. They think <laughs> they think they're just along for the ride. And in my case, that's true. But for everyone else, <laughs> look, they matter. See. But not in Kraken's chat. Yeah. Not yeah. Not, again, reiterating, not my chat. <laughs> Incidentally, <laughs> and only as part of yeah large metric movements. <laughs> It's <laughs> it's it's cool stuff, man. Um, part of part of me lamented that through YouTube and to a lesser degree Twitch, but YouTube kind of created this uh, natural selection of the race to the bottom when it comes to like popular YouTube content uh, because it's all algorithmically driven. So it's people's eyeballs and their time. They kind of vote on what gets elevated, and it gives you the cleanest view yeah. we have yet of the uh, the the preferences of the mass YouTube audience, but. It's, That's like the bad version it, of it. The good version is that people on Twitch just just by bullshit and can help participate and create a, a cool emergent narrative. It it's also I think just to kind of go full circle on the topic we're going we start out, off on with like the traditional medium uh, and like the access you know fans have mm. to affecting that compared to YouTube compared to Twitch. It really has just if if you start with like traditional media and then you go to YouTube, that was a big step up there. Twitch is now a big step up from YouTube. It's like we're, we're just kind of accelerating at this point at a speed where fans and viewers are able to and like, you know, have new methods of participating in the things they enjoy. And then those things then react with that. Um, I don't know. I Again, I'm biased because I have my whole kind of <laughs> company and, and focus as a creator <laughs> on like uh, audience interactive stuff. But that's that's really at, at the core how I see it is like, you know, the success of these mediums has been a result of, you know, audiences and fans feeling more involved and valued in the things that they enjoy. And that goes back to like about the comments, like it's just so mm -hmm. crazy how like far removed YouTube is versus Twitch. Like the amount of negative comments I see on Twitch are just like non-existent. I don't see yeah. anything like that because it's you're it's so much more personal like you're there and it's very mm -hmm. more like much more apparent that like you comment this i am sitting right here going to read it like yep. whereas <laughs> youtube is just not like that yeah yeah the fact that it's live makes a huge difference there because you know you you feel seen as a viewer compared to a, on youtube you're just a i don't know it's a forum more than anything else yeah, yeah i i always try to react to if somebody comes in and says something negative, whether or not it's to people in chat or like to me or whatever, I try to be like, hey, don't forget, we're all people, you know, like really, really making it clear that mm -hmm. that's a person that said something. And then we're also people with feelings too over here. So, um, you know, you, you just because you're anonymous in quotation marks doesn't mean that you can be a dick. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe start acting like you're not anonymous on the internet that's that's sort of i feel like the, probably the best advice i have for people in general and i'll see yeah because i have uh my youtube and twitch so integrated like that where i will record stuff on twitch and then put spend a lot of extra time making it into a video like with supplemental footage or whatever um i'll have people come over from youtube and like i can just tell a lot of times when they're from youtube just by the way they're like talking because mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. more about me instead of like to me sort of thing oh that's interesting i didn't even thought about that yeah yep, yep. it's really weird it's crazy yeah I, I i guess now i think about it like when i first started streaming you definitely get those comments of like hi everyone this is my first time on a twitch stream like it's like very it's like this pre <laughs> yeah prepared message <laughs> that they chat, send and comma. then like yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm writing to you from my like laptop letter. computer it is cute, yeah. yeah. It's 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 like they're they're dipping their toe in this new space and are worried they're doing it wrong. And you've got to like welcome them in, sort of thing. That's yeah. I really like life, it, man. The, the, yeah, I like yeah. it. Any amount of any amount of social courtesy, uh, yeah. is like a breath of air because yeah. uh, we're just surrounded by the the most extreme examples of people being discourteous to those around them these days through social media, anyway. Um, That's right. So God, when somebody is like polite, <laughs> I'm just like oh. <laughs> Just stay here and let me let me siphon the energy off you like a vampire for a second. <laughs> I have to really revel in it when I have the chance. Yeah. Um, a little white crappy I'll, there. 
That was my nickname in college. Sorry, Bruce, if I just stamped, stamped on your joke. <laughs> White no, you, crab. I, you're, no, your joke. Mine wasn't even a joke. I was about to end the podcast, okay. but you but you caught a white crappy. So uh, a ten inch white crappy. That's fucking awesome, ladies. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I want. Look at how tall that rod is. A rod's always that ladies. tall. Why is it so big, ladies? What the fuck, ladies? <laughs> that's way too big. That's not. That is not. That is not how big a tall how tall a rod should be, ladies. No. I, <laughs> I really <laughs> This thing's like twenty feet tall. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not right. I I really want to find a pic like this picture in someone's like inn somewhere, like some tavern <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Just this inexplainable angle for a photo with an crazy long <laughs> like rod by a drone. and a tiny fish. <laughs> yeah, like how the hell did this even exist that's that's like a deep sea fishing rod <laughs> that's not that is not uh, like what what you're supposed to be using to catch a white crab yeah, this is like a six inch man-made lake and you've got, you've got like a yeah, I know. Foot casting rod <laughs> <laughs> um no yeah i was gonna i was gonna end it if uh if it, any, unless anybody else had some questions for charbor yes uh, POV. any questions for the question you're the Jim. fish and i'm about to catch you it's a, this is a leading question. How did you get so kind that you would grace us with your time on this wonderful oh, nice. podcast, Charbar? Nice. Uh, How did you I get so kind? I think it was the two hundred dollars Kraken promised me, but what that Ooh, had something yeah, to do with it. I, that's why you wanted my PayPal address, you, guys, you bastard! I didn't run that by you guys first. My bad. He's hard to book. All right, he's got a forty million dollar mansion. I'm very it's... busy. <laughs> Charbar, where can they see? Where can they watch your stuff? Uh, Charborg on YouTube or Twitch. Uh, Charborg with two G's, which is unfortunate now, because I, that's not my name, but it was taken. <laughs> just to, just to settle this debate once and for all, is it, is it Charbog or Charborg? Bog. I don't think we ever got a, a clean answer. It's B-O-G. No, it's not. Charbog. Why are, no, it's not. Why are you so insistent on correcting me? Because people are going to try and type this yeah, in. Yeah, we're trying to dr <laughs> give you some viewers. And we're trying to help you. It's Char Borg, a B O R G, not Char Bog. Okay, well, who's who's the real Pinback fan and can uh, you or me, huh? I, you I are. named myself <laughs> you after are. them. I, I yeah, think no. I would know my own name pretty well. <laughs> 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 well, thanks for coming on, Char Borg. This has uh, been it's been a delightful. No, yeah, it was really nice. I had to I had to cancel on the last one I was supposed to come on, unfortunately. But I appreciate you guys taking me back. Because I had, I had fun. Boy, you wouldn't have, you don't want to know what Kraken was saying about you. Oh, yeah. He's saying some bad shit. Oh, some real bad shit. I'm Charbog not... this and Charbog that. Oh, my God. Yeah. I think he invented a few new racial slurs that day. Oof. Yeah, it was bad. Oof. You know how he gets. <laughs> Only for fish. As long as I don't have to read it in comment form, I'm fine. <laughs> Scale skin. Uh, what was the other one I had? Slime breath. <laughs> Plug your little uh, notebook. <laughs> White crappy. <laughs> yeah, white crappy. That one's good. <laughs> All right. That, we'll, we'll, let's call it there before we uh, implode. Um, <laughs> thanks thanks for coming on, buddy. It's, this has been a good talk. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Have right, a good thanks one. Thanks again. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye.